Hello, sports fans and Stratomatic Baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I am here with another tutorial video. Um, it's a subject that I think I posted a video on before, but <clears throat> this is a refresher, and it's always, you know, nice to get a different look at things and, uh, you know, and do a different perspective on it. So, today we're going to talk about... Pitcher logic, setting up your pitcher logic in your uh, computer manager for your baseball team, particularly, um, well, really, whether you're in a play-by-mail league where you, you know, send in your CM in a competitive league or whether you're doing a play-at-home league um, and you at times want to quick play some games so that you don't have to play them yourself, you'll want your bullpen to be set up in a way that you are in more control than um, hell is of how your bull bullpen is used. So let's take a look at it. Um, we will uh, walk through how to set the bullpen logic up. And to do that, we're going to look at my team in Elmwood League, my Providence Grays, and we will go to team and computer manager up we let's see update computer manager and that brings you to this to this page and let me move this over here so you can see it <coughs> so <coughs> we uh, you can see I've got my rotation over here now currently Paxton's in the minors but that doesn't really matter we're not concerned about the starting rotation and uh, you're probably very familiar with this screen you've got your rotation here and then you've got your <clears throat> your uh, relievers. You've got a setup versus lefty, a setup versus righty, a closer versus lefty, and a closer versus righty. Now, if you just leave this, uh, that leaves too much for Hal to try to mangle on his own. So you don't want to do that. So to set up the pitcher logic so that your pitching uh, can be used more the way you want it to be used, you go down here to Super Hal Bullpen. And now you can see we've got the pitcher logic lines. Now I don't have them set up, which is very convenient for this tutorial. And uh, what we will do is we will set up some logic lines. So uh, let's start with what everybody wants to do, and that is have a closer line. You can see it starts here at A, and it's up here you've got the, uh, the number one line. So we'll make the number one line the closer line. And we will type in closer. <clears throat> and now this this line is now the closer line. And um, it's it's A, and you can see it's got the ID right here. This is this is line A, and uh, and I've labeled it closer. So <clears throat> boy. So to do this, what you do is you could you first you would you would you need to set the parameters of when the closer will be used and in what situations. Down here we have score. So this represents the score of the game at the time, the run differential of the game at the time. So let's say you want your closer to come in when you are up by the score of between one and three runs. So you would type that in. So that's what this is saying. If I'm up from between one and three runs, and then you want it, uh, let's say you want the closer to come in in the ninth inning, because this is the outs. So this is the outs in the game. And you want the closer to come in in the ninth inning. So that's outs 25, 26, and 27. So you would type in 25 to 27. Now... Uh, you could also make that 25 to 99, you could make it 25 to 86, whatever. If you want the closer to stay out there as long as he can possibly stay out there. In the case when there might be extra innings. But, you know, generally I just say one inning, the, the ninth inning, let's bring him in in the ninth. Down here you got the batter type. Now these are all by default clicked because if uh, if it's like this, this line would be used against lefties, righties, switch hitters, 
reverse lefties or reverse righties. Any kind of batter that could come to the plate. Um, for the closer, you probably want that, so we'll just stick with it. And then down here, and this gives you the, the uh, ID of the line so that you know you're on the right line. Down here, you've got a box that says force. You can see it's not clicked. If you click the box, that means that you're telling Hal, this is, in this situation, I always want you to go to the closer line. Now, the, now that we've done all of that, and you can unclick it, and you can just make it, that makes it like a suggestion. Hal may do it, he may not do it. Who knows? But if you force it, he will do it. Now, um, let's set it up the way we want it. So, let's say we want our closer to be um, <clears throat> Jason Adam. So, you move Jason Adam to the top of the, li of the line here. And let's say if Jason Adam gets tired while he is closing, you want uh, Brian Baker to be the next guy that would come out of the bullpen. So you put him second. And uh, let's say we want Jake Diekman to be the third guy that he would grab if we were in a situation where both Adam and Baker were unavailable, tired, whatever the uh, case would be, or they got tired while they were uh, you know, out there pitching. And you just set it up that way. The guy at the top is always the guy that that Hal is going to grab first. And so that's going to be the closer. So this is the closer line. This is how we set that up. Now let's say we go down to B. We go down to the next line, the next ID line. And um, let's say the next ID line is the setup one. We'll call this setup one and this is the line that'll come in right before the closer. So setup, yeah, let's see, setup one. So uh, what I would do is I need to switch this to B. So you go down, you go uh, up here on the drop down menu and now you've got this. We're on ID B. You see that this line says that it's IDB, and right here the box reads as setup one. Now we set that, we set the parameters for this. So now this would be, you know, prior to the ninth inning, this would be the eight. Let's say it's the eighth inning. Let's say we want this to happen in the eighth. So that would be 22, 23, and 24 for the outs. And let's say we want this to happen if we are tied and anywhere from tied to winning by let's say three runs so that's what this is saying if the score is tied and all the way up to I'm winning by three and outs 22 to 24 22 23 and 24 so this would be the eighth inning Again, we have all of the uh, handedness batters checked, so he'll face any of the batters. Here, the ID is set up one, and uh, we'll force this one too, so that you're saying, okay, in the eighth inning, and then we'll go over here and we'll change this. And let's say we want Kendall Graveman to be our setup guy in the eighth inning. He's going to be the number one setup guy. So we'll put Graveman at the top, and then let's say we put uh, Joe Jimenez next, and then we put um, Tim Miza after him. Now, one thing I would point out, you you generally don't want to do too much repeating of the guys at the top of the line because you don't want it overlapping and, you know, using the wrong guy in the wrong, at the wrong time. So it's always nice to keep it crisp and clean and uh, different guys at the top of each line. So we'll set up the seventh inning line. So we go down here. Uh, same deal. Let's say I want this to happen if I'm... Let's make it interesting. Let's say if I'm losing by one. So you type in negative one and I'm up by three. So I'm losing by a run. Anywhere from losing by a run up to three runs up. And uh, the outs would be, uh, what would this be, 19, 20, and 21? Yes. So this is outs 19 to 21. 
And again, facing any of the batters, and we're going to call this um, we're going to call this line setup two. So setup line two, and you go down here to the drop down menu. You get um, the uh, correct line, and you can see the ID. It has assigned it the setup two line. When we would be down by a run to winning by three with 19 to 21 outs. And so there you go. The, and if you force that one, and let's see, did we force this one? We did force that one. So in this, and then you change it, and let's say we make um, Yarborough. No, we make Presley. Presley we haven't done yet. So we make Presley the number one setup two guy. And then we make Yarborough the second guy. And then we make maybe Brian Baker the third. You know, I mean, there's only so many pitchers you're going to have in your bullpen. So you're going to have to do some repeating down the line. But you don't want the, certainly you don't want the first guy to be repeated. So what this is, what we've done now is we've told Hal, if I get to the seventh inning, and I am in a tie game or, you know, tie game or I'm up by one, two, or three runs. In the seventh, I want Ryan Presley to come in and pitch that inning. And then if I am uh, up by uh, anywhere from a tie game to up by three runs in the eighth inning, with uh, 22 to 24 outs in the game, I want Kendall Graveman to come into the game. And then, finally, if we get to the ninth inning and I am up by one, anywhere from one to three runs in the ninth against any batter, I want Jason Adam to come into the game and pitch. And he'll do that. So your three pitchers would be Presley in the seventh, Graveman in the eighth, and then Adam in the ninth, and that's how he would do it if you hit force on all of these, on all the lines. If you don't hit force again, um, he may do it. He may not. I'm not sure. Um, <coughs> but if you force it, he'll do it. Now let's look at this and say, what if I'm I'm getting blown out? So you come down to line four because we haven't used line four yet. And let's call this the blowout line. And uh, we'll call it the blowout one line. So now we've got a blowout one line. And let's say that we want to do this when the score is. Now, you're, let's say we're, this in this situation we're losing. We're getting blown out. So you're going to want to put the higher number first. Remember before we were putting the lower number first and then moving up to, you know, being up by a number of runs. Here we're losing, so you want to do something like I'm losing by negative 8 to I am losing by negative 5, let's say. And uh, you want this to happen relatively early because you don't want to burn up your bullpen so we'll say we want to do this from outs um, I don't know uh, 13 let's say out 13 to um, 99 to the end of the game if possible against any of the uh, batters and then you go down here to the ID blow out one and then let's move Ryan Yarbrough to the top of blowout one line. So if I'm getting blown out, um, I'm losing by anywhere from between uh, eight runs to five runs with 13 uh, at, at the 13 out mark, uh, mark of the game to the rest of the game. He'll bring in Yarbrough, and Yarbrough will pitch since I put in uh, out 99, pretty much Yarborough will pitch until he's too tired to stay out there. And then really, if you put Yarborough on, can pitch when tired, he'll pitch the rest of the game. So uh, that's 
that's that. Now let's set up another one where we're we're winning. We're getting we're blowing the other team out. So we'll this will be the blowout two line. And uh, the blowout two line, you go down here to ID five, you go blowout two, and so you can see now it has assigned ID E, line E, the blowout two line to this. And uh, let's say that we are up by um, between, now again, now we're winning. So we're doing the same thing as we were doing with the closer. We're, we're going up. So let's say we're winning by five. We'll do it in reverse order of the other one. We're winning by anywhere between five and eight runs. And from the 13, uh, out 13 of the game to out 99. And, uh, you know, and I guess in this situation you could put Yarborough back up there because only one or two of the, it, I, either one of these is going to happen, but not both of them. So, in the same game. So, uh, you, you put him, Yarborough, first, and so whether I'm getting blown out or whether I'm blowing the other team out, Yarborough will be the first guy that he grabs. Let's make Mize of the second guy, Jimenez is the third guy. And so that's how you do it. So that's basically, that's the pitcher logic line. I just wanted to give a refresher on it. I know a lot of guys, um, you know, I've been asked by different guys, oh, you know how to do that? Well, yeah, I do. So here's the video on it. And uh, let me know what you guys think. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. It helps me out. Give me a thumbs up on the video. Leave a comment because that helps me too. And uh, so this is, hopefully, when I say okay, he'll say everything's fine. And he did. So, because if you do it, if you do it wrong, like you put in the numbers the wrong way, like negative, uh, instead of, uh, like if you put in something, I don't, I'm not sure, like a negative, negative six to negative eight, that would be the wrong order for, you know, if you're getting, if you're losing. And so he'll tell you that there's an error. Um, or, or if you wanted to put in, I'm winning by one to three runs, and you put in three first and then one, he'll tell you that it's in the wrong order. So there you go. That's how it is. And that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, letting you guys know how to set up the pitcher logic line.